thank you very much. Um, I'm very honored to be here um, by the invitation of Wetsis to be here with you and today to reflect on the importance of innovation for a fair and sustainable society. And it's very good to be here on a real, a real Congress, a real, with real people, compared to, <laughs> to, compare to all the, uh, the online Congresses I had in, uh, in the last year and since I started in this position uh, uh, September last year. So it's good to be here and thank you. A fair and sustainable society is at the heart of the, oh, yeah, it works, is at the heart of the UN Sustainable Development Goals to promote prosperity while protecting the planet. See, it works, yeah. And water is at the heart of sustainable development with a dedicated goal to ensure sustainable water management and sanitation for all. Water and sustainable development is also at the heart of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management and guarding our efforts. Yes, the, min the Ministry is committed to improve quality of life, access and mobility in a clean, safe and sustainable environment to protect against flooding and to improve air and water quality. A lot has been achieved in, over the last few decades. However, great challenges remain, not only just in the Netherlands. I think water is the primary medium through which the effects of climate change are manifested. Water scarcity is already, already affects every continent. Many water sources are drying up, becoming polluted, or both. And water, water use has been growing uh, Water, uh, water use has been growing um, more than twice the rate of population growth in the last century. Worldwide, one in three people do not have access to safe drinking water today. In the Netherlands, we experienced three extremely dry summers between 2018 and up to this year. But this summer, heavy rainfall led to severe flooding in Western Europe. For three days in July, the Rhine and Meuse catchment area was struck by extreme rainfall. Within a short period, devastating water flows not only caused major damages, but also deaths in the Eiffel and Ardennes regions. In Limburg in the Netherlands, fortunately no lives were lost, but thousands of people had to leave their homes in great haste and the floods were devastating. Research shows that these severe floods can, can be attributed to climate change. And these examples show that our Delta country is vulnerable to climate change. We are experiencing more extreme weather involving torrential rain, rainfall, heat, and drought. And at the same time, sea level is rising, river discharges are changing, and soil is subsiding. The Netherlands is still the best protected Delta in the world, but we're, but we're increasingly confronted with difficult questions. Like how can, we keep, how can we keep our country safe from rising water now and in the future? How can we assure sufficient supply of unpolluted fresh water? And how can we assure that the Netherlands remains an attractive country in which to live, work, and invest? And to answer these questions, we need to realize that water is serving a crucial link between the climate system human society and environment. This requires a paradigm shift on how we deal with water, a transition away from linear water management approach and to a more circular water system. We need to consider how much water is available in our natural systems now and in the future and use this to underpin decisions in spatial planning. We need to value water and step up our climate adaptation efforts. And for this, we need innovation for a fair and sustainable society. And I think such in in innovation can only be reached through an integrated and inclusive approach. A good example of which can be found in the Delta program. The aim of the Delta program is to make the Netherlands climate proof and water resilient. This is a transition of unseen proportions, because at the same time, the Netherlands is also working on transitions in agriculture, infrastructure and energy, a huge housing tasking, nature restoration and a circular economy. 
every area is faced with several major tasks. In my opinion, combining solutions is key, and they open, but it also produces unique opportunities. Therefore, it's important to work together and establish mutual connections. And that's why parties all over the country are participating in the Delta program. National and regional governments, businesses and NGOs, residents and farmers and scientists. And here, I'd like to highlight an integrated approach at the high sand regions. These regions have to adapt on the climate change because they cannot be supplied with river water. Through the process of co-creation, all partners bring in their ambitions and solutions. Freshwater challenges. Freshwater challenge is the, treat is the treatment of wastewater that allows reuse for agriculture. Now, and this requires technological information, innovations, but also social innovations. The integrated and inclusive approach involving all stakeholders, from local partners, to research institutes like WETSIS. Another example I'd like to highlight here is in the field of water quality. Clean water is also a challenge for a country like the Netherlands. Water quality, water quality, quality policies started in the 70s when the Water Pollution Act came into force. And since then, the color of many surface waters changed from black to green. But this green, this green color indicated that there still was a surplus of nutrients. Change this one. With the introduction of several, several European directives integrated in the Water Framework Directive, the color of surface water slowly changed from green to clean water. And not everywhere, there's still a lot of work to be done in this field, but in many places, species are returning after an absence of decades, like the salmon and otter. A large number of parties work together, motivated by many inspiring projects. To improve the biology of our water bodies, we aim at nature-based solutions. And for this, I'd like to mention the Marker Wadde as an example. We created a large island in a man-made lake, and in this way, we restored natural land-water boundaries, creating room for aquatic species and recreating people. But also the tre treatment of sewage water improved. Since the introduction of the canals in the city of Amsterdam, nobody even thought of taking a swim there because they were open sewers. And nowadays, hardly any sewage water is discharged to open water anymore without treatment. People started to swim, even in the canals of Amsterdam. And even our queen did, did once during, a, during an event called City Swim. So our water, water quality improved, but there's still several challenges ahead. New substances are invented every day and they also end up in our water system. For some substances like PFAS, new knowledge indicates the effects on human are at much lower concentration than we considered before. And therefore we take the, the precautionary principle as a starting point of our actions. And then there's the issue of pharmaceutical residence, residues. It led in 2016 to the start of an integrated program. All parties worked together to reduce pharmaceuticals in the surface waters. Pharmaceutical companies, healthcare professionals, science and regional water authorities brought in measures for their own fields of business. And this boosted innovation of sewage treatment. And furthermore, my ministry my ministry in initiated the program of 60 million euro to improve sewage water treatment. And in September this year, the first of 15 sewage treatment plants was equipped to remove pharmaceuticals and other micropollutants. In addition to that, an innovation program started to optimize techniques li like the use of ozone or active carbon. In a program like this, regional water, water authorities are working together with consulting companies and knowledge institutes. Not only are we aiming at improving our water quality, more and more we see developments of technologies that regain energy and raw materials from the sewage. Sewage treatment is starting to become circular 
with the reuse of water itself as the latest perspective. And I come to an end. As I pointed out, most of the challenges we are facing today find their origin in too much water, too little water, or polluted water. And these will have a large impact on society in the future. And government cannot solve these challenges alone. Which is why, as a Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management, we also invest in innovation in an integrated and inclusive approach, involving the worlds of research, government, businesses, and society. And for this, we need institutions such as WETSIS to help us to translate social challenges into science and innovative products and make connections between science, business, and government. I think this is why it is so important that we can meet and exchange knowledge today. Thank you very much.